Hey YouTube, this is part 3 for how to solve Rubik's Cube blindfolded. In this step, you're going to solve the edges so that your cube is now actually going to be solved. So in this step, what you're going to be doing is placing each edge one by one. Now, before I start explaining how this works, I need to explain a couple things, just like I did in the last step. Okay, so to begin with, we're obviously going to have new buffer zone and undisturbed zones because we're not solving corners anymore. So we're not going to have a corner as our buffer zone and a corner as our undisturbed zone anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to have this edge here is going to be our new buffer zone and this edge here is going to be our new undisturbed zone. Now the reason for that is because we're going to be applying the same algorithm to solve the edges, the one that you learned in the last video, because it switches these two edges. So if we make this our buffer zone, then we can switch these two edges and it will still switch these, these two corners. So that way, whether you do parity or not, they will come back together. And I do parity, that's why they're switched right now. So. What we're going to do is we're going to, once again, take what's in our undisturbed zone and we're going to try to place it wherever it has to go. So this has to go here. And then we're going to continue what doing What we're going to have to do is get those pieces into the buffer zone and then switch these two edges and then put them back. Now also, because it's the same algorithm that we're using in the other step, since it switches these two corners, that means that these two corners can't be disturbed either because if we have to keep switching the same corners. So whenever you're doing setup moves, you can't disturb these two corners. So that means that if I was to get for example, this piece into the buffer zone. We can't just go like this because that would disturb one of the corners and then when we do the algorithm we'd switch these two corners and that would mess up all your corner placement. That also means that you can only use the left side and the down side for setup moves, which obviously as you can see isn't enough mo isn't enough sides to get the pieces in. That means that you can also turn though, you can turn the middle slices. You can turn this middle slice and you can turn this middle slice. So that means that by using those middle slices you can actually get all the pieces into the buffer zone. I'll explain a little bit more into that later on in the video. So now we're going to get on to actually solving the edges. So first obviously you're going to look into your buffer zone and you're going to see that remember that since the algorithm switches these two edges and these two corners. Remember it's switching these two stickers. So that means that we have to get this sticker. We have to look where this piece needs to go. Because remember, we're orienting and placing the edges at the same time. You're going to try to get this green sticker into its green sticker location. So that means that we have to get this part of the edge that's already in that position into the buffer zone. The part that's facing the green side. So you can actually very easily do that. You could do that by just moving the middle layer down. So you can see it comes from here up into your buffer location. Which remember, is this edge location, not the actual edge itself. So once you get up there, you can just do the algorithm that you did before. And then all you have to do is just put it back doing the setup moves in reverse. And you'll see that this piece is oriented and placed correctly. So now we're going to get this piece into the right spot. Remember that since we're switching, we can actually think of it as switching stickers, not edges. So you're actually switching the white sticker with whatever is in that white sticker location, which is blue. So you can do that by just moving the middle layer twice. And you'll see that that piece gets in. And then you just do the algorithm. And then you do that setup move in reverse, moving the middle layer twice the other way. And that gets that into the right spot. Now we have this piece. So it's the blue and orange piece. But the sticker that's in the undisturbed zone right now is the blue sticker. So that means that whatever is facing the blue side of that piece, which is the white sticker here, we have to get into the buffer zone up here. Now, you can't do this very easily. You're going to have to do a couple more extra moves. You might have already figured this out, but in case you haven't, what you're going to have to do is to get this in easily, you're going to have to pretty much put it into what I like to call a trigger spot. And the two trigger spots are right here and right here. Now the reason is because those are two are very easy places to get into the buffer zone from if you get the piece into that spot. If you get it into if you were to get this piece replacing this white sticker right here, you can just bring the middle layer up twice and you get it in the buffer zone. If you were to get this white sticker into the green sticker spot of this piece, you can just bring the middle layer down like that and you get it into the buffer zone. So you're going to try to get every other edge besides these two and this one for reasons I'll explain later into one of these two trigger spots and then that way you can just easily bring it up to the buffer zone. Now this piece you can see if you were to just bring it down onto the downside 
you can easily get it into this trigger spot right here. Remember the white sticker of it. So you're going to do that, and then you're just going to move the middle layer up twice to get it into your buffer zone. Do the algorithm. And then undo your setup moves. Like that. This sticker here is white, so you have to get it to the white sticker location of that piece. So what you're going to do is move this over into your trigger spot here, and then bring it up like that. And now you're going to undo your setup moves to put it into the right spot. So now we have this piece. Now this is the yellow and green piece. It actually just needs to go into our buffer zone. So just like when you're doing the corners, if it has to go to the buffer zone, you just do the algorithm because there's no setups. So now that piece is placed. Now as you can see, we're almost done with the cube. We only have a few extra pieces that we have to solve. But the problem now is that once again, just like with the corners, you're going to run into this The undisturbed zone is solved. So you're going to have to do, just like with corners, you're going to have to break into a new cycle. Now remember when I said that, for reasons I'll explain later, you're this piece doesn't need to get into a trigger spot. And that's because this piece is also a trigger spot. Because all you have to do is just move the middle layer up, and you can get that part into the buffer zone. So you're going to get that piece into the buffer zone, and you're going to do the algorithm to switch them. Undo your setup moves. And now you've broken into a new cycle. You're here. So now you're just going to continue like normal. White sticker. White location. Do your setup moves to get that up into the buffer zone. And then undo your setup moves. And now it's solved. And then you're going to get this piece. So now, remember orange. Orange. So for this one, you're going to have to bring this down, get it into this trigger spot right here. There it is. Undo your setup moves, and that's now solved. And then you're going to have to get this piece here. Now remember, in the last case we did, when we had to break into a new cycle, we had to get this sticker, which was facing the blue side, into the buffer zone, which you could easily do just by going like that. Now this time we have to get what's in the yellow what's facing the yellow side right now into the buffer zone. You can't do that by going like this because the buffer zone is this sticker location and not this sticker location. This is why I emphasize on making sure that you get the right sticker into the buffer zone because if you get the wrong one, let's just say that you were to take the piece that's facing the blue right side right now and not what's facing the yellow side and just do that carelessly. When you put it back, the edge piece will be flipped. Remember, you have to get what's on the yellow side. So what you're going to have to do is actually, to get this piece in, you have to bring it down to the downside. And then, that way, you can bring this around into this trigger spot right here, and bring it back up. Like that. And then, undo your setups. And then, you have that piece right. Now, you'll notice that when you put this piece back, this is flipped wrong, and it's in the right location. Now, all the pieces are solved, except this one's also flipped, so technically it's not actually solved yet. Whenever you have a piece that's flipped wrong from the very beginning, it's going to be kind of hard to place it. To flip these two pieces, what you're going to have to do is, again, break into a new cycle, but this is going to be a different kind of cycle. What you're going to do is get one of these two sticker locations into the buffer zone. So, I'll just choose to get what's facing the yellow side right now like that, and you're going to switch them. So now that you have this orange sticker in the buffer zone, what you're going to have to do is get what's in the orange location right now into the buffer zone. Like this. There it is. And then when you undo the setup moves, both of the pieces will be flipped. And if you were able to follow along with how the stickers were being swapped and everything, you'll be able to understand why exactly they were switched in the first place. Now you know the whole method for being able to solve the Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Click here so that you can learn how to memorize because that's the only thing I didn't teach you yet. That's it. Thanks for watching.